you're on the Tudor Hotline with Melissa Maribel. How can I help you? Hi, Melissa. This is Annie. So my teacher is planning to test us on activation energy and catalyst by giving us graphs and then explaining them. How would I explain them? Okay, let's go over that. So let's say if you had this sort of graph and we wanted to understand what every single part of this graph you know, is, is talking about essentially. So we are gonna label this. And what this is describing is an actual reaction that's occurring. So with its reactants, how that's becoming our products. So what we're looking at with this reaction mechanism or energy diagram is on the Y axis, we're going to see some sort of energy. So potential energy is typically the case. And that's either measured in joules or kilojoules. And then here on our X axis, we're specifically looking at how the reaction is progressing. So let's just start off with identifying what's our reactants, what are our products, and then seeing what type of reaction this overall is. So if I were to label this, where here I have O3, where this is actually our reactants. And on the left side, that's always going to be our reactants. And then on the right side, that's going to then form our products. In this case, we don't just have like a typical one, like one curve. Instead here we have two different curves or two different high points, which we'll go over these. These are actually known as transition states or activated complexes. Now here in the center, since we do have two, you know, distinct curves, then this is known as an intermediate. Whenever we have that kind of dip and this levels out and there's something in between, we have that intermediate. What this is talking about is that we don't just instantly go from O3 to then magically producing this product. There has to be some sort of in-between phase. That's what our intermediate is describing and it's actually talking about. Something else to notice with this graph is how high of our energy, like how high our energy levels are for our reactants and our products. And we'll notice that the reactants energy is higher than the products. Whenever our ener the energy of our reactants is higher than our products, then that tells us it's going to be an exothermic reaction. What an exothermic reaction is, this is essentially telling us that heat is being released or energy is being released since energy or heat is a form of energy. Now, once again, this is just describing that the energy of our reactants is higher than our products. If this were the opposite, if our products, let's say, were up here and they were higher than our reactants, which are down here, then that would have been an endothermic reaction, okay? So that's something to definitely understand the differences, and that's one way that you can just instantly tell, is this exothermic or is this endothermic, is by looking at the energy levels of our reactants and our products. So now that we, we understand what type of reaction this is, let's move on with how to label uh, every single point and understanding what everything means. So the next thing we're going to look at is activation energy, which is represented by this symbol. What activation energy is? It's the energy required to go from our reactants to our products. And in this case, it's a little bit different. What I want you to think of is activation energy is Let's say if we're going on a hike, okay, if we're trying to go up this, this hill, and I start here. Well, I need that energy. I need to figure out how much energy do I need to then walk up this hill. That's activation energy. It's the energy needed to go from the reactants or point A to point B, okay? So in this case, instead of our products, because we have these transition states or these two distinct hills, then I know I'm going from the reactants to this transition state. That's my first activation energy. And how we're, we're always gonna measure this on the graph, it's the distance between our reactants and that transition state or activated complex, okay? Or this the highest point, that's what I want you to know. And then we have another one, right? Because we have another transition state or, or activated complex, here I see this is once again now going to go from the next point that I have. So it's no longer the reactants to the transition state. It's now the intermediate to the transition state. So that's our second activation energy. If I wanted the activation energy of the overall reaction, then I would measure this from, I would start this off actually at the reactants, so where the reactants are, and then it's the distance from the reactants to the highest transition state. All right, so, or you could also think of it as you're pretty much just adding these two activation energies together. 
that would be our overall activation energy. Next thing we want to look at is our enthalpy change. So remember what enthalpy essentially is talking about. Enthalpy or delta H just means the change in heat or heat transfer. Heat is being transferred. That's essentially what we're looking at, okay? So what we're, we're gonna look at here is the overall change, enthalpy change of our reaction. So you're either gonna see it like this where we have this represents the enthalpy change and this says overall, or you're going to see it like this where this just refers to the reaction. So they both are describing the overall reaction. So now what I would do is I, I would measure this from the reactants to the products, okay? So you're literally gonna take it from this line where we have our reactants, and it's the distance from the reactants to the products, or products to reactants, okay? That's what I want you to see here. This is going to be our overall enthalpy change. Now what this is describing is because we stated that this was an exothermic reaction, that tells me that heat is being released or energy is being released. So if it's being released, then that means delta H is then negative because it's exothermic, all right? So this is going to give us a negative value since the energy of our reactants is larger than the energy of our products. The other thing that we were talking about was our transition state or activated complex. So either name, I've seen either name for these. What is that? Well, it's the overall point of the reaction where we have the maximum amount of potential energy, which is, that's why it's the highest points here. And in this case, we have two different transition states. And then I also want you to think of the reason why we have these transition states is because we're getting to different points where the way we could even form a new product or go from reactants to products is by breaking bonds and forming new ones. So that's essentially what our transition states or our activated complexes are allowing us to see. They're telling us where our old bonds are broken, so the reactants are broken, and where the new bonds products are being formed. So that's the main idea with our transition state and our activated complex. And I hope this makes a lot more sense with all the little parts to this question and all the little you know, thing, labeling for this type of energy diagram or reaction mechanism. Now, if you wanna get your question answered because I know you have questions. How do I know you have questions? Because I get questions constantly in my DMs of my Instagram, comments on YouTube, comments on Facebook, comments on Twitter, comments in any social media platform, messenger pigeons. I didn't even know that was a thing. Someone then post-mated questions. How, what, is that a new feature? I don't know, but I know you have questions. And there is a specific place to ask your question. In the description box, you're gonna find a link. You're gonna fill out that form and you will be able to get your question answered. It's an easy form, okay? So make sure to do that, ask your question, and I will be happy to answer it. And of course, since you're gonna check out the description box, there's so many other resources. I have detailed notes on different topics that I know are beneficial to you and on like basic chemistry topics that are essential for this class. So make sure to check that out and I'll see you next time.